Welcome back. Take a look at this article. Phone and laptop seizures, at airports and borders. Please read it. It is short. And very well written. At the end there's a few personal testimonies, relevant to the issue. The title of the article is self-explanatory, but let me highlight the first sentence of its TLDR. Border agents have the upper hand, you can be detained and your device is seized. Key disclosure laws, make it legal to force you to surrender your passwords, and biometric access. And if right now you're thinking, all my devices are completely encrypted, I don't need to read this article. Then you definitely need to read the article and watch this video. As you will have guessed by now, privacy violation across borders and checkpoints is not getting better, it's getting worse. Law enforcement officers at the airport are going through your bags, your laptops, and especially your phone, in greater numbers than ever. So what I'm trying to accomplish in this series of videos, is for you to be so confident in your setup, that when a border agent asks you, Sir, please unlock your phone and laptop, and kindly hand them over to the officer, you can immediately comply while being totally confident that even though your devices are being cloned, your data is hidden, and safe. You should never lie to a law enforcement officer about the contents of your device. Read the article I mentioned a minute ago, and think about how you should populate your phone with appropriate apps that do not compromise the data nor digital identity that you're trying to protect. So always tell the truth about the auditable content in your devices, and everything will be okay. If you end up implementing any of the strategies that I'll be discussing in this video or in any of my previous two videos in this series, please be aware that they are, short-term, workable solutions. These techniques should not be employed for long-term storage or concealment of data. The following, is a summary of what I'm doing today. In part 1, I will boot tales from an offline computer, where I will write some secrets. In part 2, I will encrypt my secrets with a strong but memorable cipher, and encode them into QR codes. In part 3, I will scan the QR codes from my mobile phone, and from an online PC. In part 4, I will embed my secret files into two images, using steganography, but this time, I will provide a very strong cipher for the encryption. Then I will post these images to a social media platform that does not compress pictures like Twitter. In part 5, I will move to my phone, which by the way, should be running the graphene operating system, if you're serious about security and privacy. I won't embed these secrets into pictures right away. Rather, I will wait until I'm ready to go through border control, and use a couple of very recent images, as cover files. And in part 6, I will recover my secrets going through the reverse process of using an online computer first, and then an offline one. So, in this setup, my secrets in clear text are exposed only to a perpetually offline device. A first level of encryption protects these secrets from an online PC running Tails, and a mobile phone, ideally running a privacy and security focused mobile operating system. And a second layer of stronger encryption will protect my secrets, from basically anyone with an internet connection. Let's begin. I am booting Linux Tails from a computer that will never connect to the internet. You can learn and play all you want on a regular computer, but please, assume everything you type on its keyboard, is compromised. So I will write a couple of secret files. This is just an example. You can write whatever you want, in as few, or as many files that you like. In the first file, I will write a Bitcoin mnemonic seed phrase. I'm also going to write the onion address of a server I own. It's the kind of server that I set up in the first video of this series. I will use Electrum to scan the address via a QR code.
My second secret will consist of an SSH private key generated offline. I am going to protect this key with a strong memorable passphrase that contains words, numbers, and special characters. And again, I need to be able to memorize it. Take some time to get it right. Now I am going to encrypt the first secret with a cipher. I will use the passphrase with which I protected the SSH key. This way, both secrets are protected by a single password that I have committed to memory. With my secrets encrypted, I can move them to other less secure online devices. I will do this, through QR codes. I would recommend to convert this QR codes into image files, that can be easily managed from the GUI. My second secret file is just too big to be encoded in a QR code. If I count the lines of text, I can split the file right down the middle, with the command, said. And finally, the SSH public key. But let me get rid of the key description first. I'll delete all the text files. And I'm left only with the QR codes. Images that I can full screen and scan from my online devices. Now I am booting from an online PC. There's some files in the persistent storage that I will need later. Provide an administration password, since you will need to install some software. But first, let's bring our secrets over. Scanning the QR codes. This is the first half of the SSH key. And the other half. Now I will transfer my secret files to my mobile phone. Please read the article I mentioned in the introduction of this video. There's good advice about how you should set up your phone when going through border controls. Basically, you should wipe it, while making it look as your regular daily driver phone, filled with apps that do not compromise data nor personal information that you're uncomfortable disclosing. So these are the apps that will help me accomplish the goals of this tutorial using my mobile phone. You need, Termux, a QR code scanner, and the Tor browser, which by the way, does not allow me to record my screen while using it. So you will see me use instead, a regular web browser. So you can see what's going on. But please do use the Tor browser. So, I'll scan the QR codes from my offline PC, and write them into two files. Using the QR code scanner app, and Termux.
Before shutting down my offline PC, I still need to back up my SSH public key. I will scan it from my online computer, and save it into the persistent storage. Now I can safely shut down my offline tails. It is time to hide these encrypted files into a couple of image files. Please watch the second video of this series, if you want to learn about steganography in greater detail. I will use these two pictures as my cover files. My files are ready. Connect to the internet. Update your sources. And install. Stack hide. When I hide my secret files into the pictures, I can add a new layer of encryption. But this time, I am going to use a stronger cipher. I don't want to depend on public key cryptography, and I want to be able to retrieve this password from publicly available sources. There's many ways of doing this, but a solution that I like, is using the hash of some very well-known and available software package. Or, you could use the hash of a block in the Bitcoin blockchain or any transaction ID within it. You get the idea. At first glance, this practice might seem alarmingly unsecure. But remember, this is supposed to be a temporary solution. And besides, you have an additional passphrase generated offline, that protects the secret files that we're dealing with. So let's go to a block explorer. Genesis block. I could use the block hash, but I'll go with the Coinbase transaction ID. If you are uncomfortable doing this, you can hash it any number of times. I will do it once. So, I just need to remember that my password is the SHA-256 hash of the Bitcoin Genesis Blocks Coinbase transaction ID. I have everything I need. Reference part 2 of this series, if you don't know what's going on. I will move the images into my persistent storage. Now the cool part. I am going to post these pictures to my Twitter account. Notice that I've just logged into Twitter over Tor, in Linux Tales. Depending on your internet connection and the time of the day, this can be quite challenging. So. Let me do this from my regular computer instead, on ClearNet. Shut down Tails. Boot from your Linux daily driver, and insert the Tails USB drive. Type the password that unlocks your persistent storage. You'll notice that your regular user cannot access the encrypted volume. You need to be root. So open a terminal window. Log in as root. Navigate to your persistent directory 
and copy your stuff to your host computer. I will also get my SSH pub key. Remember to change the ownership of the files you've just copied, to your regular user. And now you're ready to proceed normally. I'll post these to Twitter. The only reason that I can do this, is because Twitter does not compress uploaded images. This can change in the future. So please, always do some research, and definitely check that you can retrieve your data. I'll end this section by adding the public key of the SSH key that I generated offline, to my authorized keys file on my server. Check the first part of this series if you want to learn more about this setup. I'm going through border control in 30 minutes. My phone is prepared. Except for a few apps that I still need to uninstall. I need them to embed my secrets into a couple of random pictures, that I've just taken at the airport. I'll move my two most recent pictures. From my camera roll. To Termux home directory. There they are. Next to my secret files. Type. Package. Install. Stack hide. And you know how to get your password. Please use the Tor browser. Genesis block Coinbase transaction Hash it once I will write it into a file just in case And you're ready to embed and encrypt the secret files into your pictures. Done. Wanna check that everything is okay? Type. Stack hide, info. Looks good. Wipe everything except the images with the command, shred. And move the picture files back to your camera roll. Now it would be appropriate to uninstall all these apps. 
now I will go through the reverse process, and recover my secret files in a secure way. Boot Tales Online, providing an administration password. Connect to the internet. Update sources. And install Steghide. Download your pictures from Twitter. You don't have to log in. Reconstruct your online password from whatever hash you've used. And extract your encrypted secret files. I got them. The final decryption needs to happen offline. So I'll convert these into QR codes. I will leave this computer running and boot from an offline PC. Decode the QR codes into text files. My first secret file is ready to be decrypted, with the strong yet memorable passphrase that I provided during part 2, offline. There it is. My Bitcoin seed. And my server's hidden service address. Now I'll recover my second secret file. Since I will have to move the SSH key out of this PC through QR codes, I will keep both halves separate. Now I can safely shut down the online tales that I used to retrieve my secret files from Twitter. So this is where we are. I've managed to decrypt my secrets, offline. Now I can import my Bitcoin seed into a hardware wallet. And perhaps move private keys, just in case. I could also export my onion address and SSH key to an online computer, access my server, and over Tor, retrieve all sorts of data that I have backed up there. Passwords, data directories, documents, etc. Let's do this.
I'll prepare the SSH QR codes. This would be my last chance to enter the seed into a hardware wallet. I will show the onion address, and move to an online computer. This command will scan QR codes using the computer's webcam. Control C to exit. Now I will reconstruct my SSH key. Finally I can shut down the offline computer. Remember to restrict access to your SSH private key before using it. So, I will access my server over Tor, which can be anywhere in the world. Using credentials that I got from a couple of memes, that I posted on Twitter. Entering my SSH key password. I am in. And here's all my stuff. Now I will restore the secret files hidden on my phone. I have just installed Termux, a QR code scanner, and the Tor browser. I'll start by moving my pictures into Termux home page. Let's reconstruct the password. Install Steghide. And extract the embedded secret files. Got them. If I want to decrypt my first secret, I need to install GPG. Type. Package. Install. GNU PG. Type your password. Done. Of course I would never decrypt a file that contains a Bitcoin seed on a mobile phone. I'm doing all this for educational purposes. What I will do though, is accessing my server using Termux. The SSH key is ready. I need to install the OpenSSH package. Type 
SSH. If you get an error regarding some missing libraries, you need to upgrade your packages. And finally, you also need to install Tor Socks. Notice that the Tor daemon will be installed and enabled by default. Test Tor by running the following command. This should not be your IP, but a Tor exit node. So I will SSH into my server over a Tor. I am in. And again, it cannot get cooler than this. SSHing into your server over Tor, which can be anywhere in the world, by retrieving your access credentials from a couple of pictures that you took with your mobile phone. I have left lots of links in the comment section below, where you can learn about most of the subjects I discuss in this video, and in this series servers, steganography, PGP, SSH, hidden services, Tor, and more. Until next time.